So, I don't normally do this, and I'm not getting paid or anything to say it, but recently Christmas came a little bit early as I finally pestered my wife into letting me get a special little gift I found on Amazon. This is a review of the Pandora's Box Arcade Game Stick by SNK Everyday. Now, if you know me, and if you're familiar with my channel, you know that I love, underscore love, the arcade. Especially the old school arcade games I absolutely loved growing up with. I am quite intimately familiar with them. So, the other day I was on Amazon, looking through some of the arcade home options, and there were some cool looking choices. They had some full arcade cabinets, some half cabs that could sit on tabletops, which looked pretty cool, and they even had some cocktail cabinets. All of which had good and bad points, but all with the disadvantage of just being too big and unwieldy, especially if you live in a tiny little apartment without the space to accommodate. And then I saw it. What an awesome idea. The Pandora's box. An arcade stick which has literally hundreds or thousands of games built into it. Now as you can see, I came a little bit late to this party, which I would have loved to have been invited to from the very beginning, as it's already in its seventh iteration. So the first thing you notice is that there are many different options as far as type and aesthetic design. There is a mini single player arcade cabinet type. There are several different designs for two player arcade sticks, one of which has its own small screen. And there's even a portable type in its own protective carrying case so that you could bring and play anywhere. All of which are cool in their own ways, but if you know me, you know there's just one choice. Bam! There it is. The Neo Geo Multi-Video System 2-Player Arcade Stick Type. If you could just distill all my arcade dreams into one perfect thing, this is it. This thing, which I have never seen up to this point, is exactly what I've been waiting for ever since I was a kid. So, you order it, and it takes a little while to come because it's shipped from China. In my case, it took about 10 days or so, and it comes with all that you see here. It includes the power cord, VGA cord, and a nice long flexible HDMI cord, and even a couple extra buttons as a backup. And it's just that simple. Plug in the power, plug in the best video feed, which is probably the HDMI, switch it on, and there you go. It comes with 10 3D games, which is on the first screen that you see as it opens up, but as they don't necessarily work the best, more on that later. The main feature and the main point of owning this stick is the well over 2,000 2D arcade games. 2,167 to be precise. And wow, what a main feature it is. You just use the joystick to scroll through page after page after page of alphabetically arranged arcade games, and you use the player 1A button to choose it, use the player 2 coin button to get back out and back to the main menu. Now. Since I am intimately familiar with arcade games, we've had very, very passionate relations together. I know that this is a pretty definitive collection with an extremely deep number of old school classics and second and third generation arcade hits. We're talking about the essential classics, Pac-Man, Frogger, Space Invaders, Ghosts and Goblins, Donkey Kong, Kid Nicky, Skip ahead to the 80s and 90s, the ones I grew up with, like Final Fight, Shinobi, Robocop, Dynasty Wars, Rastan, Golden Axe, and skip ahead to the Street Fighter 2, Dungeons and Dragons, Dompachi, Change Air Blade, and even on into the 2000s with Pro Gear, Vasara, Hyper Street Fighter 2, and of course, what is for me, the absolute main event, a full complement of SNK Neo Geo games. We're talking all the Metal Slugs, all the King of Fighters, up to 2004, all the Samurai Showdowns, all the Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, The Last Blade. They're just all there, and they play great. But in addition to all these main feature games, there are even some goofy ones, clones and such, like this oddball Dragon Ball Z game that just takes and cuts up the assets 
of another game I'm intimately familiar with called Shadow Warriors, aka Ninja Gaiden, and just shamelessly recycles them. But wait, that's not all. You get all kinds of extra Easter eggs, games that are not even arcade games. Mario is on here, Castlevania is on here, Lemmings is on here, Sonic the Hedgehog is on here. Now, getting back to the 3D games, honestly speaking, they're not very good. There's only a small number, they're mostly Tekken, and really, they don't play that well and they don't look that good. I have a pretty good HDTV screen, and these games, I mean, you could just look at them and tell they don't look that fantastic. I think of them as really just a gimmick to get people to buy the stick, so if I were you wanted to play Tekken, just get a high-powered console and play Tekken. This arcade stick comes off as a lot more of a worthy product if the main thing you have in mind are the 2D arcade games. Okay, now that I'm done gushing all over the really nice parts about the stick, it's time to get critical and delve into some of the finer details. This thing's got games coming out the wazoo, and as you can imagine, with well over 2,000 games, well, they're not all going to be winners, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's great to have them and all, but at the end of the day, you don't want to have to spend so much time scrolling through games that you probably won't spend so much time on, if ever. Fortunately, there are some options. There is a menu button on the front of the stick, and it gives you some choices. For one thing, you have the option to hide games, so you don't have to drown in excess. This comes in handy not only for reducing the number of games to scroll through, but there are some adult games left in. Don't get me wrong, I have been known to get rather... intimate with arcade games, but when you have kids, you don't want to just scroll through some innocuous or innocent sounding game like Bubble 2000 thinking, oh this is just a clone of Puzzle Bobble, I'm sure it's just like it because it might not be. The option menu also gives you the ability to customize the buttons as you wish, which I think is good that it's there, but not really necessary for the stick, as the buttons are just like you would expect from a real arcade. But another cool feature is that you can plug in a controller in the USB port and use it, so button customization could be quite useful there. There are also different images you can set as the wallpaper, and the background music which is an instrumental version of the song Indestructible by Exile from the Street Fighter 4 soundtrack, you could switch it on or off. And after all the adjustments, you can save your choices. Also, be careful in the main game menu as you scroll through, as you might skip. You see, the way you scroll through seems obvious, but there's a trick to it. Up and down on the joystick to obviously go up and down on the page, and left and right to skip through the pages, but you see how there's always a nice little video preview playing in the top right corner? It gives you a convenient preview of games that you might not be familiar with, and it makes you want to scroll to the bottom and then go to the next page, but... See, did you catch that? When you go to the bottom and then turn the page, it goes 10 games ahead. So we went from number 55 to number 65, skipping the 9 games in between. An easy way to recalibrate is just go forward and then back to reset it at 55 at the top. Now as I am intimately familiar with arcade games, we have touched each other in many special places. I am aware of some severe gaps in the arcade library. For example, it includes Gunbird 1 and 2, but it leaves out Gunbarich, the really fun, cute spin-off, and other really great arcade games that I know would play on the hardware, games like Dragon Blaze, Red Earth, or Strider 2. And the most unforgivable sin, the lack of Street Fighter 3. But not to fear, or so I thought, as even when I bought it, I checked the notes from the seller which specifically stated that you can add games with a TF or micro SD card. So I went out and bought one, I followed all the instructions as far as labeling, and I got an error message. Now, the art on the sticks and the advertising and even the words from the sellers seem to indicate that you could put a lot of games on it. There is art from Mario 64, and the seller says it can read N64 games. And it was even said that it runs on the emulator PPSSPP, another emulator with which I am romantically familiar. So I was under the impression that I could add all kinds of games, but no matter what I tried, I could never get it to work. As I said, I'm not a technical man by any means, 
In fact, this stick kind of forced me to improvise and use some technical ingenuity I wouldn't have thought possible. When I first got it, I kind of panicked because the machine wouldn't acknowledge the player one joystick input. So against the urgings of my wife, I decided to open it up and noticed that some joker had disconnected the joystick. And now that I had it open, okay, let's figure out how to use it. I discovered the SD card port, but as I said, no matter what, I couldn't get it to work. It may just be some technical error on my part, and maybe it's just as simple as fixing the labeling. So I'm not going to say that adding games is impossible, just that I didn't succeed. Last but not least, I said that the games are arranged alphabetically, but that's only partially true and kind of a headache. They are generally alphabetical, but the games seem to be grouped in some way that's hard to understand. For example, it begins here on the very first page with some Capcom games, but not all of them. So if you're thinking they're grouped by company, well, not really. They're in some category, but still scattered around and hard to find. The last ones, the ones around the 2000s, are the SNK games, but the order still mixes in some oddballs and isn't perfectly alphabetical. Again, something that the hide option can help out with. Overall, I give this stick as a product on its own an 8.8 .8 out of 10. But take that with a grain of salt that I'm judging it heavily on its 2D library. It has some issues as I mentioned, and it currently doesn't have an option for saving states, which might be improved with further versions. However, the most important things about it heavily outweigh the bad. The stick has the perfect look and feel of the Neo Geo. The box is nice and sturdy and tough, just like a real arcade. It fits well on one's lap with enough space for a second player. If your goal is essentially the same as mine, which is keeping the love of the old school arcades alive and well and passing it on, you need to get a Pandora's Box arcade stick. But until then, I will play some arcade classics.